Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about five a day piano exercises to keep you in shape and what your warming up routine should look like. If you are a musician with affinity for piano or keyboard or consider taking on piano lessons, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to share with you five exercises to master for a healthy piano diet. If you find this informative, please go beyond liking the video and subscribing to using the comment section and share which exercise was your favorite and why. Then share which type of content you like to see me creating next. That would help me understand what would most benefit you who are supporting this channel. Good, let me share a bit of context that is going to serve as credentials for what I'm about to cover on today's session. I've been playing piano for over three decades in different concert halls for different size audiences on different pianos, both grand ones or digital ones. And I realized quite early that I needed to arrive to the hall earlier to get acquainted with the piano I was going to perform that day on. Let me quickly tell you why adopting today's exercise into your daily routine or make it part of your warming up session prior performance is important for you and what the benefits of this are through an illustration. Have you ever had to take your car to your local dealer or garage and they told you that you only need to leave it overnight for a few days in order for them to fix it when they said, have no worries, we will give you a courtesy car for you to use at no cost. You happily get the key of the shiny new or most recent car and off you start driving back to your normal business affairs. While on the way back to your work, though the new car has all the latest shiny gadgets and promises a lot in terms of new features compared to your old car, you still feel like everything is in the wrong place. The chair is too high. The armrest is not giving you enough support to your arm, the steering wheel is too high, the mirrors are not properly set, and so on. Even after you've tuned this to fit your height and your preferences, your brain still takes few days of using the new car to start feeling at home with this new car. That's exactly what these exercises are meant to help you with before any performance you need to deliver upon. Helping your brain feel at home with the new environment and the new instrument, the new key bed, the new key sizes, the new action and touch response, the new keys weight and the new damper sound to what you are used to at home. Now that we covered the use cases and the benefits of these exercises, let me share a few details on the scope of this exercise. In this video, I'm playing all the exercises in C major for show and tell purposes. However, to gain most of it, all these exercises should be done in every key, major and minor. However, when doing that, please mind to adopt a natural adaptive finger numbering depending on need. So the finger is different for different keys. Your objective of each exercise is to play it correctly every time and clean. You can increase the speed over time in stages. But remember, playing it fast is not the objective here. Rather, it will be a natural outcome of your incorporating these exercises in your usual daily practice before you begin practicing your usual songs. Let's get started. Exercise number one is playing the scale symmetrically for the first two octaves for both left and right hand when the left hand starts going backwards, returning, and come back to the same point, while the right hand continues to go up to the fourth octave and then returns. You can play this in both legato and or staccato. I will play legato first with a tiny accent on every other two notes first. Now, the exact same exercise, but using staccato. A great variant of this exercise is starting from the same note 
and go in contrary motion. So left hand goes down, right hand goes up. I'll show you the variant of this exercise using A minor, as you can go until the last note of your piano on your left hand. Second exercise, it's called broken chords. I will play long arpeggio, four notes, and then move my thumb to the next note in the arpeggio to find the next inversion. The left hand does the same thing, but instead of going up, it actually goes down. Right hand. Left hand. Both hands starting from the same note, C center. I've shown this in C major, but same applies for any key. Third exercise. It's exactly the same as the previous exercise in terms of fingers numbering, but instead of playing majors, start now playing minors and diminished chords. I will show the case of C minor first and then C diminished known as C0. C minor. That was just right hand. Now both hands. Now C0. Backwards. Then you do with both hands in contrary motion. You can apply that to augmented chords as well. Let me show you in G augmented. Again, your objective is not the speed, but just to show you where you could get. Fourth exercise, it's called chromatic scale. This is very straightforward one. Every time you meet a semitone between two white consecutive keys, you use one, two, three as your fingers. Everywhere else, the pattern is one, three. You apply the same rule for both left and right hand. In order to keep things very simple and have symmetry between both hands, start on the D instead of C in contrary motion. Right hand first, then both hands together. I've just shown right hand over two octaves, but you can go on three octaves or as many octaves as you wish. This is how your hand should look like before you start the exercise. Now, both hands starting on D. Fifth and last exercise, playing in octaves. For this exercise, you'll need to first play the root of your scale in octave. And then imagine you are bouncing a basketball ball on a hard surface, and as the ball bounces back at you, you are pushing it down again and so forth. Keep this in your mind. Now relax your hand and your wrist 
then keep maintaining the same pace and motion while you add movement to the right and to the next key in the scale. Same exercise identical for your left hand. So the left hand does the same exercise. When feeling comfortable, you can do it with both hands. Let's look at it now. Okay, let's start right hand C major. Starting on the root. Bouncing the ball. When I feel ready and I relax my wrist, I start moving into the scale. So that was my right hand. Now left hand, same motion. So bouncing the ball. When ready, I'm moving forward. Once you feel comfortable with each hand, you can play with both hands. Let's wrap it up by recapping on what we've covered today. Today I shared five exercises that will help you maintain your piano agility and keep your piano playing in shape while also looked at other use cases where the same exercises can be used for warming up activity before giving a performance. Then I showcased every exercise and presented few variations for each. There you have it, your five a day piano exercises. I'm Stan and this was fun. We will play you out through a nice song. <laughs>